Hi there, my name is August Simonelli and I'm part of Red Hat's customer and field engagement team. Today, I'm going to demonstrate installing Azure Red Hat OpenShift. Getting started with Arrow is easy. You can find the installation wizard in Azure's container menu or by using the search bar. The wizard makes installing Arrow easy and provides a production install out of the box. Click to launch the wizard. Next, we're going to provide the basic details to get things going. Choose your Azure subscription. Arrow is installed into a resource group. You can either use one you have or create a new one. Here, I'm creating a new one. Choose your region. Now, provide an OpenShift cluster name. It must be unique as it's used internally by Azure. When setting the domain name, you have two choices. Either provide a prefix, which will be appended to the default Azure name and doesn't require your own DNS, or set a prefix and fully qualified domain name. If you do this, you can set up your app and ingress entries in your own DNS. But for this demo, I'll just use the prefix. The wizard suggests default VM sizing, but it's easy to change it. Just click change size and a convenient blade appears where you can change which VMs you want to use. You can even change the number of workers you want to deploy, but you can never go less than three. We're keeping this production ready. Next, we need to provide our service principle for Azure. The service principle allows an Azure application, in this case Arrow, to interact with Azure resources. Service principles are easy to create and provide a unique ID and password. I created mine earlier and I'm adding both here. You also are going to need a Red Hat pull secret. You can grab this from the Red Hat portal. Arrow is installed into a virtual network. Either use one you've created or create a new one. Through the wizard, you can adjust the address ranges for the controller and worker subnets directly. You can also set the uh, API server visibility and ingress visibility to be either private or public, depending on what type of Azure network you've set up. Finally, set any tags you need to manage your environment. On the review and create screen, we see all our settings. Now, with all settings validated, it's time to create the cluster. Here we go. Just click Create. Now, of course, deployment time will vary per region, but this one took about 25 minutes. You can watch the progress via the Azure notification alert and dig into the details by clicking on the Operation Details link for each resource. Once the deployment is complete, all the relevant and important details are available directly in the console. You'll find all the inputs and important outputs like the password to log in with the kubeadmin user. There's even a template generated that you can use to automate the entire process later. And accessing OpenShift is easy. You'll find full details by viewing the OpenShift application in the resource group. Here, you'll find cluster details and a link to the OpenShift console. Click it to log in. You can use the kube admin user and the password from the output screen to get started. Your Azure Red Hat OpenShift cluster is now ready to use.